All right, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Klaus, for having me. So uh, she's busy. Unfortunately, had a last uh, uh, minute uh, issue come up. So I'll give this, this talk on some work we've been collaborating on. So pelvic incidence plays a role in pelvic mobility and acetabular version. So pelvic tilt and pelvic incidence are increasingly recognized as having a potential role in young adult hip disorders. Pelvic incidence is a static measurement of a parameter of sagittal orientation of the pelvis and uh, spinal balance. It's a natural component of uh, each of our postures and there's significant variation between patients. So it's independent of position. It affects our lumbar lordosis and our pelvic orientation. We can measure this on a standard lateral lumbosacral radiograph as shown here. And in the spine literature, there's clear associations with uh, spondylolisthesis as well as the relationship between the lumbar spine and the hip. So pelvic tilt, on the other hand, is a dynamic parameter uh, that varies by position. Changes have been shown clearly between supine and standing positions. Um, and we set out to understand this effect on uh, acetabular orientation as well as the occurrence of FAI. So uh, Tanast and colleagues have showed uh, for some time how uh, pelvic tilt and rotation affect uh, the appearance of the uh, acetabulum and most markedly those parameters of uh, acetabular version. So here's two patients, one with increased pelvic tilt on the top. They have increased lumbar lordosis, uh, increasing the coverage of their hip functionally. And in the setting of dysplasia, this may be uh, adaptive, while in, when FAI, it may be a, a maladaptive pattern. So the opposite, obviously, true posterior pelvic tilt, decreased lumbar lordosis. We see this a lot in our uh, FAI patients. This may be sort of protecting them from uh, impingement to some degree. So this is a two-part study. We initially looked at pelvic tilt, and then the results of that study really led us to pelvic incidence, so I'll go through this. So initially, we set out to determine changes in, how changes in pelvic tilt between standing and supine affect acetabular version, as well as uh, impingement motion in a dynamic model. So we reviewed 50 consecutive FAI patients, all with standing radiographs, as well as a low-dose uh, CT scan, uh, which we analyzed with the Dionix Plan software. So we measured our sacrococcygeal distance as our initial proxy for pelvic tilt. We then take uh, that from our uh, radiographs and we can adjust this in the, in the uh, software to have two sort of set parameters of supine position and standing position to see how that differs. We looked at static parameters in each of these uh, positions, lateral center edge, crossover sign, and then acetabular version. We also looked at range of motion and hip flexion, internal rotation and flexion, as well as impingement testing, and then uh, standard statistical analysis between these two techniques. So this is our population, mean age 29, 71% were female. This is a typical patient, so we take their supine simulated uh, AP pelvis from the CT scan. We look at their clinical standing alignment. And then in our software, we can adjust that to uh, have that in the CT. So this patient is moving uh, six and a half degrees posteriorly when they stand, and you see the difference in their functional acetabular uh, orientation. A small crossover sign uh, goes away as they posteriorly tilt. So here's the initial analysis. So sacrococcygeal distance is moving six degrees, or so, sorry, seven millimeters. This correlates with about a three degree change in, pel in pelvic tilt. About a fourth of patients with a crossover sign goes away when they stand. And if we look at version in the standing position functionally, uh, they are more anaverted, and this corresponded to some previous uh, literature as well. And then finally, we looked at those who have residual crossover sign in the standing position. And interestingly, it, it looks like this, this is due to a, a changes in pelvic mobility rather than sort of the base uh, line point for these patients. So on average, these patients aren't moving posteriorly or at all compared to about four degrees on average for the patients without a crossover sign. So patients with more retroversion and standing had less pelvic mobility as they changed from supine to standing positions. Similarly, uh, supine to standing positions also changes our occurrence of impingement as well as subtly our location. So this led us to uh, uh, sort of conclude that standing pelvic orientation results in posterior pelvic tilt and that in some patients, acetabular retroversion that remains is due to less pelvic mobility. And that begs the question, is this due to some other parameter? And that's where we looked at pelvic incidence. So pelvic incidence, again, is the sum of pelvic tilt and, and sacral slope. A is not a dynamic parameter. And we're going to look in the same population at what this, how pelvic incidence is playing a role. So we looked at 44 of those 50 hips that we could actually calculate this out on based on their CT scans. Uh, perfect lateral to measure this. 
Here's two different uh, patients, one with uh, 33 degrees of pelvic instance, one with 69. We looked at the same parameters as our initial analysis, a very similar uh, cohort. So if we look at this initially, pelvic incidence averages 48 degrees and uh, similar changes in pelvic tilt from supine to standing. We separated this out into a low pelvic incidence group as well as a high group. And when we separated out based on that, uh, those parameters, patients with high pelvic incidence demonstrate uh, greater posterior tilt of the pelvis. So we see changes in pelvic tilt of uh, four and a half degrees compared to one degree. And if we look at our version, similarly high pelvic incidence has a more anaverted appearance in the standing position. So then we, so this is a typical case. So again, these two patients, different pelvic incidence. If we look at their acetabular orientation, the one with decreased pelvic incidence has a mild uh, uh, crossover sign while the uh, high pelvic incidence is much more anaverted. When we control for other factors, it holds that greater pelvic incidence was associated with greater posterior pelvic tilt change from supine to standing, and the opposite being true as well. And this makes sense when we look at the literature on sort of static measures, uh, this out of Cleveland, uh, smaller pelvic incidence uh, relating to uh, pincer and cam morphologies, as well as in the Skiffy literature, again, smaller pelvic incidence uh, in Skiffy's compared to normal controls. So in conclusion, uh, this sort of dynamic uh, assessment uh, was, was novel, and we demonstrated that decreased pelvic incidence may play a role in uh, greater functional acetabular retroversion in the standing position due to decreased pelvic mobility. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, next speaker is uh, uh, Steve Ferguson. Uh, talk about natural cars and synovial fluid don't change a winning team, and he is from Zurich. 